Today you're going to hear from Susan Allen, a psychic medium, but I'm most interested in her work with animals as a pet psychic. Hearing stories about the journey that people with abilities travel is fascinating because we all take wildly different paths that lead us to the same destination. You can follow me on Instagram at Medium Allison, on my Facebook fan page, and you could binge on my YouTube videos to watch readings, including episodes of The Dead Life, including this episode. If you want to leave me a message to air on future episodes of The Dead Life, call me at 802 dead 3811. If you have abilities of your own and are looking to expand them and connect with other gifted people, go to deaduniversity.com for more information. For information on private readings, you can email us at booking at allisondubois.com. And that was all a mouthful. So, Susan, thank you for sitting down with me to share your journey. Oh, such a pleasure to meet you. I'm so excited. Thank you. I'm happy to meet you, too. I'm like, oh, pretty medium. Yay. Oh. Um, so, you know, when I think of people with abilities, the thing that interests me the most about them is where their journey started. Was it in childhood? Was it in adulthood? I think we just talked about this off camera a little bit, but um, can you talk to my listeners about where your journey began and what brought you to here? Yeah, I think it began in childhood. I mean, my brother said he came into the crib to pull me out. He was 11 years older than me, and he said, "What are you, who are you talking to? And I said, the beautiful lady, and he <sighs> ran screaming out of the room. And <laughs> My mother always said, I'm watching you. Like, what did that mean? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, my mother had passed away in my 20s. And um, I heard her screaming as if she was in the room. And it didn't occur to me that it was something different than I always heard. Get to the emergency room. And she had saved my life from the other side. But I still wasn't thinking, this is something. Like, this is something you could do. Because I just... Well, you had to pound through and just get the next job, you know? So it wasn't until later in life that I started meditating. That's kind of like where it started, through getting very quiet and meditating and spending a lot of time alone and stop having 25 people over my house and serving dinner all the time. Yes. It was really the path of the loneliness, you know, being alone and getting in touch. And I think I people underestimate the value of quiet. Yeah, A lot of people, you know, they'll have six kids running around the house and their husband, you know, coming through the door with his needs and they're making dinner and they've got a couple barking dogs and they're like, why don't I get any signs? It's like, would you know if you got one? Because you're kind of distracted. Distraction exactly. makes it hard to communicate. And it's the first thing people need to remove. And it's why most people, as you know, have experiences when they go to sleep because their brain shuts down and allows the other side to access them. Yes, absolutely. So after your, after your mom died, is she like a guide for you now? Does she help you with readings? Do you ever talk to her? I rarely talk to her, and we were super close. It's my dad that steps in, that's mm. always there for readings. But I could feel his energy. The other day I was doing a reading with somebody, and um, I heard him say, she's from Bari, the hometown my dad was from in Italy. And I said, is your mom from Bari? Because I heard my dad say it. Right. And she, and she said, yes. And I, it's on YouTube. We just put it up like I'm cracking up. Like, wow. <laughs> like, I still get so excited. That's why this is a business I can never give up. Right. Well, I think with mediumship, once you become a professional medium, and I've said this to Joe, when am I going to be able to stop doing readings Never. and you can't because it wells up inside of you <laughs> and it right. actually will hurt somebody with abilities to not use their abilities and to try and hold it inside almost makes you feel a little angry or aggravated so wow. for the people yes for the it's true yeah so for the people that are out there that are intuitives and you were talking about not knowing that you had abilities necessarily and it's because you only have your own perspective to go by so you didn't know, you just assumed everybody else knew when the phone rang who was on the other end of the line or saw a beautiful lady next to their crib when they were small. All of these things in our mind become normal because it's what we know. But for people out there who see what we do, they then say, 
oh, that's amazing. And sometimes we start to feel very ordinary in what we do because it's such a big part of us. It's like eyesight or hearing or, you know, just it's breathing. It's it's so natural. So, yeah. but we have fun with it too. I mean, when we get bored, we get to probe people that are around yeah. us and just read their story in their head and what's going on with them. So people talk about being ADD. I'm like, gosh, I'm glad they didn't have all the labels to stick on people when I was a kid because I'm pretty sure they would have tried to medicate me and they just told us to go play sports, which I did. <laughs> well, I, I probably saved your life. I know dancing saved mine, like just being really active, right. especially after readings, like to just sweat and work out is like my go-to. Well, you have to process the energy out, and people don't understand that with readings. They're like, oh, it was only a half-hour reading, and it's like, well, yeah, but I brought a woman through who shot her head, self in the head or, you know, somebody that hung themselves for, you know, by suicide, and we go through a half an hour, and then it takes, depending on the severity of the reading, it could take a day to process out the energy from that reading of the pain of the, the sitter, the client, you know, their pain, the pain of the deceased, trying to clear up what is between them, remove the guilt for the living. You know, it's that's a whole process, work. right? Yeah, that's the real work that people, so, a lot of people don't understand. Well, and they don't understand, you have to be able to let go of it. Um, you know, that's why a lot of mediums drink, honestly. It's just the mediums I know, they're like, yeah, a strong martini goes far. I call it a baptism. Yeah. But also after readings, it's important to physically release it through visualization techniques, like taking a shower and saying down the drain away from me three times while visualizing what's bothering you from that day, going down a pipe as far away from you until you can't see what was bothering you anymore and yeah. you feel 20 pounds lighter. It's so important to do these little exercises so in important. order to exist <laughs> in the human world. Sometimes before reading, I get all these feelings and I'm like, what is going on? And I completely forget because it's natural to me right. that it's the person I'm about to read. And when I get on with them and I do my opening prayer and meditation, I'm like, oh, Susan, there you go again. It was all about them. It had nothing right. to do with you. Right. And that's the relief part. But you kind of you kind of go to those places and that's part of it, you know. Well, and everybody has to figure out what works for them constructively to work out. Not that a martini is overly constructive, but like the shower is, <laughs> you know, and to yeah. constructively be able to process out all of the energy that is built up in you. And I think there's a lot of sensitives out there that don't realize that that's why they have anxiety and that's, that's right. why they feel overwhelmed that's because right. they're absorbing the energy of everybody around 100%. them. And they don't know what to do with it, so they take a pill. It's like, okay, before you take a pill, let's talk about what you're feeling, what you're picking up on, and how other alternatives to process it out. Because a pill will suppress it on some level, but yeah. it's still welling up inside of you. It's still hurting. It's still causing anxiety. So I hope my listeners really take yeah, that to it, heart. It, it was anxiety with me. I mean, I had my first panic attack at five. Wow. And, you know, uh, over had, what? Do you remember what what I, made you I think panic? It was, it was a car accident, and I was in the back seat, and yeah. it was one of those old Chevys, and it was a two two door car. Uh -huh. And my my stepfather went like went, stopped at the stop sign, went through, and somebody else didn't stop, and I could feel like I was hyperventilating. I couldn't breathe. My mother had it too, but she didn't know it was abilities. She would have panic attacks, and um. I had them at significant times in my life. When I found out my mother had cancer, it was mind blowing. Yeah. And uh, my mother brought me somewhere. It was to a psychiatrist, and instead of medicating me, he tried to teach me how to meditate. Nice. Which I didn't take heed at my twenties. I couldn't focus yeah. enough. Right. But later in life, um, a friend of mine said, "You have to meditate." It wasn't that I was searching to be a medium. That was right. the last of it. But being able to use meditation to control the thoughts mm -hmm. and my mind, and it's a computer, so you could program it, was actually so amazing to help me in my mediumship. 
that's what really started to develop it. And I meditated for 18 months uh, before I did a reading. You know, I, I took this silly little class and I was like, I had discovered, wow, you know, she made you journal each animal reading that I'm about to publish a book. I oh, like, great. I have four composition notebooks full of journaled animal readings. And it was, it sounded like a Disney novel when I, when I read it back to the class and the class, including a veterinarian started calling me for, for readings. So I thought that was what's going on here. Is this something I, yeah. I never had written anything like this before. I didn't, I didn't see myself as a writer and I thought, wow, this is beautiful. Like when I'm reading out loud to the teacher and knowing things about the horse that like, and he, he stopped himself and he said, it's not my nose, it was my nostril. He stopped himself in mid-sentence, and I, I wrote that. And I thought, wow, I don't think I'd quit my day job, which I never did. I, I did this under a pseudo. Right. So it wasn't until I kind of calmed down through meditation that I was really able to focus enough, I think you would say. So um, first of all, do you have Libra in your chart? I don't. My mother was. Uh, a Libra. I have Pisces and Cancer rising, and I have an Aries. Now, Cancer Moon. I'm a Pisces. I'm all water. My whole chart is water. <laughs> I don't know you, if you can tell that. I'm so watery. You look so Libra because you're so put together. So I wonder. That's why you... being raised by a, a Libra. Okay. <laughs> so you're you're Libra adjacent. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Beauty snobs. They pass on the love. To yes, us. my mother was very much like that. And, you know, thank God, I would say, like, my mother had nothing to do with my mediumship, which was, it was really mine. Everything else mm -hmm. was hers. You know, dressing, the beauty business, be, being raised in New York, that was all about her. But right. my mediumship was developed through me on my own. And it's like, oh, I'm free. I'm a medium. <laughs> Well, and I, I don't know that people realize that there's a timing to when some people's abilities get turned up and they get frustrated practicing and trying to duplicate maybe something in a reading we did. It's like, be patient. It's going to open up in you. There's a timing to everything. There's yeah. a method to the madness of the universe. You have to trust that your abilities will get turned up as long as you keep with the faith and following, you know, in the light and the abilities will go up, but you can't demand it. And I think it's why abilities frustrate so many people because the they want to, yeah. they want to force it. They want to force know it. what you know. And I'm yes. like, well, I don't know how to really teach that. I could just right. teach you my path. Right. And uh, yeah, they, they want to be able to buy it. They want to be able to go to a store and say, I want to be able to do that. And you can't do it. It's one of the few things in the world that you have to innately work on on a soul level. Definitely. And I think a lot of people have a hard time challenging themselves on a soul level, which is a, a reason that we have this um, episode today because I like hearing from other people with abilities and how you did. So you went to a court, a class, a course and sat through it and, and it built you up to being able to try to do it for someone in a full reading. And so again, it's the practice that makes it possible. It's not that you just get hit on the head with a magic wand one day and all of a sudden you're this amazing medium. Like it takes practice. And the older you are, the larger your vocabulary is, the more places you've traveled, the more the dead have to access inside of you to for instance, where your father was from, you knew that word, you had a reference for what That's was right. being talked about. So you were able to articulate that for very young mediums, their vocabularies are more limited, their travel is more limited. And so they tend to not have the arsenal of experiences That's to right. give a reading that's going to have completely specific details involving geography, names, uh, foods, anything that requires experience to have to, to have seen. So do you have any advice for people that are starting out that really want to 
increase their abilities in what really worked for you. You said was meditation, yeah. but as you were learning how to how to read people and how to adjust your energy to the living person, the client, that's probably where they need the advice. How do you deal with the living when you have a difficult energy in the living person? Or how, you know, how do you adjust your energy to somebody who's closed off, right? We all have our known, stories. I have been known to tell people, you know, I think there's another medium that can read you better. Than right? You. I've, I've just given money back and referred them someplace else. Um, I want yes. to go back to what you said about the class. You know, I didn't take that class to become a medium. I had no idea this existed in me. I right. was going, I was like so into mediums. I'm so into the art form of this. Right. But I used to go to mediums, like one medium I went to 55 times over 10 years. And I was like, I was becoming a medium because I could feel my energy change mm-hmm. when I was with this medium. And it was kind of like my PhD in mediumship, pardon me. But the real reason why I went to this silly class is I just loved my little dog so much. And I thought, I think I want to learn how to communicate with this dog. Oh, nice. But I had already been working with horses, and I had already um, massaging them. And all of a sudden at a ranch, this horse told me how to heal his back hind legs. And I felt like (laughs) my real gift came from doing working with animals. That's what I really thought. And it was only later, like years later after doing animals for years and years on under my maiden name because I didn't want to quit my day job. Right. That's the advice is I would say like people have called me and say, I, I'm, this is happening and that's happening. And should I be an animal medium or should I be a medium? And I kind of say, um, well, you would start your business, like do a bunch of readings for free for testimonials. Like that's kind of before you just launch off because you need the evidence that this is real. You right. know, I, I'm like, you would think I was a Virgo the way I'm so hard on the evidence. Like I you don't look evidence. like a Virgo. Okay. But <laughs> mentally, you would think I'm so hard on the I want the evidence. Like I'll always ask spirit, give me something for them to really, you know, I, like I'll say before, you know, I need this to be healing for the person spirit. Right. You know, guide me with love and help. It's it. a really fine line in readings I found because – I was, I'm highly competitive. I'm a Mars and Aries, so I act and react with aggression and competition. It's just how I am. And so when I was in a laboratory being studied by the scientists, they were pitting mediums against each other. So we were going toe-to-toe with the best mediums in the world, no pressure. And I, I think when I was younger, that was my late 20s, I think I was losing track of that it wasn't about me being impressive. It was about the state I was leaving my client in. Did I help them with the words emotionally to heal their wounds rather than those wow points that I was trying to get to impress the scientists? So as I got older, I got very good at gauging the wounds of the client and, um, and sometimes the wow moments lie in the messages more so because right. of the healing right. rather than a name or the middle name is and being able to say it's a middle name. And mm-hmm. I find with my students, they're in that competitive stage where they really want to <laughs> prove it, want to prove it. But once you move past that and you settle into the comfort of being a medium, this is my life. This is what I'll be doing until I die. Rest of your life. That's right. right. You'll then die you're in your chair. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Just like the show, you know, <laughs> it is based on my life. Uh, but I'm not willing to relinquish Joe in a plane accident. No. Uh, that that's no, that the part that <laughs> I was like, you guys, uh, special place somewhere for you <laughs> for writing no, my I husband. Think the <laughs> healing the messages that are the most healing are like subtle messages i was talking to a client that actually invited me to paris for my birthday in march and we went to lords we had this amazing and i didn't even know the woman but i knew she was going to be great for me to be with i had one meeting with her and i brought in her grandfather with a parrot on his shoulder and she burst into tears and she had said that when she was very sick with two young kids with um, very aggressive breast cancer she asked for a sign from her grandfather and this parrot came on her balcony 
And Aww. she knew that that was the sign. So years later, I'm doing this reading for her, and I bring her grandfather in with a parrot. So to me, that's yeah. it's for them. It's not for me. Right. But I would like them to know that it's evidential. <laughs> that's why I say to Spirit, you know, help me with yes. the evidence because it's up to you to help them. Well, and for the mediums who are learning, they have to recognize sometimes it'll be a very obscure piece of information that comes through that doesn't make sense to you, but you have to say it because you never know how important that weird, quirky piece of information will be to the person that you're no reading. Editing, no We're editing. just secretaries to the dead. It's not our job <laughs> to judge the information coming right. through just to deliver it to the client. I did have a question about your yeah. book. Do you talk to, uh, in your book, the, when is it going to be out? Hopefully by October. Okay. Well, that's Hopefully. a good time to do it. Um, yeah. So are you going to write about how to connect with your pets on the other side or like for no, people to, it's going to be more like, um, my, how it happened and how it started and probably teaching a little bit how to start it on your own. If you wanted to do it and intermittent with all the store, like all my journal readings, I'm going to take okay. the best of my journal readings and publish them. So with the I, animals. that, yeah, and people are going to love that. Yeah. You're going to get the question from a million people, how do I connect with my animals, just so you and know. And I'm going to do a course for that. I will do a course for okay. that. Okay, that's sure. great. Okay, so you're going to have a course so that they can learn to connect. I can get pets in readings. I don't have the water in my chart that you do, so my focus is Lucky. more on... Tr- like right. You well, well, you know, some say yes, some say no, <laughs> but, but no, I'm definitely lucky. Um, I have a lot of air, a lot of air in my chart. Um, so when it comes to the making contact with the other side and when I'm seeing the animals, I can feel how they may have felt around the time they passed or Mm -hmm. I'll describe the animal, but I'm more into trauma readings because I worked in homicide. So I'm more focused on the surroundings and the, um, you know, manner of death, what they felt like when they died, the age they reverted to. So what they look like now, that, Mm -hmm. that sort of information. But um, all mediums personalities tie into our style And I think it's what makes us all individually unique in that I wouldn't consider myself um, a pet psychic because as much as I like animals, I'm more about children. And so I tend to be seen more as a mother figure by children who have died and they come to me because of that. They feel safe. Mm -hmm. And so, and you get people and animals, but I just don't have that connection with the animals like some others do. And it's nice to have you to refer people out to because that's something that I don't focus on in readings. So Mm. we're all different in our our information. I would say we all deliver the information differently. How does your, how does your husband deal with you having abilities? I mean, is he, he was not for it. He goes, do not tell anybody you're doing that. (laughs) I, I had, I had a girlfriend build my website and it was like a beautiful, very childlike for just for animals. And then dead people started coming in. And then one night at dinner, I said, Oh, I read for this, um, rock stars girlfriend, but I never knew who the rock star was. And, um, he said, well, I, I started to describe the guy that came into the reading. He goes, you need to go home and Google the guy. And the link was exactly who I saw in spirit. When I Googled, mm-hmm. I, was like, I was like, this guy's your father. And he's like, no, he's, he's not my father. I was actually talking to the rocker. <laughs> and his girlfriend used to call me for animal readings, and she put him on the phone. And then that was the first time dead people started coming in. Wow. And, um, so the animals were to prep you. The other side was prepping yeah. you for I think the I next was level. So, Alice and I had such tremendous anxiety that I could not watch horror movies. Like I didn't want dead people walking in my house. That would just scare the bejesus out of me. So how they communicated the first time was the picture of my dad and I started to morph into her dad and what her dad looked like. And I was like, oh, and it was so gentle. It wasn't freaking me out. And I said to Spirit, I go, if this is how you're going to give me messages, 
I love this. This is just, it just feels like I'm moving out of the way. It's like the one time that I don't get to think about my problems and I could just be there. And I think that's the beauty of it is it's so beautiful that I just can put myself aside and my issues aside and bickering with my husband or the dog just chewed up something. It's like I could just push it aside and just be present and, I think that's the beauty of it. I did a reading for a man that found me from the George Norrie interview, and him and his wife came on, and he didn't have kids, and this dog, older couple in Arizona, actually. Beautiful house. We have plenty of those. (laughs) They're doing the reading in their backyard, right? And it's a beautiful backyard, and they had just lost their dog, and they were he was just bereft over it. And she had kids, but he didn't. It was his second marriage. And he goes, this was like my son. And I go, I know, he's telling me that. And I said, but he's telling me he's with his mother in heaven. You know, the dog had a mom. Yeah. And they both adamantly said, oh, no, that's not true. That the mother is alive. And, I mean, for me not to get, like, oh, my God, this is unbelievable that this is coming through, he uh, put on his review that he had called the breeder. The mom of the pet had died one hour before my reading with them. Wow. So he was with his mom, and he gave me that evidence. And I got the, I got the goosebumps as I was repeating it. That's exciting to me. Like, I still get excited. There's those mediums that give evidence <laughs> that don't jump up and down, and people get excited. I'm the girl that I'm excited with you. <laughs> yeah. I don't try no, to that... hide that. That's, that's, I'm glad that you're enjoying that part of the phase because I, that part's behind me. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I remember getting excited over the details um, in readings, especially in the laboratory when, you know, they'd say, who do you think you're bringing through? You know, we had to answer after getting information on the person on the other side of the partition who was connected to the deceased and um, I walked out of the room and I looked at the, the uh, professors, the scientists, and I said, um, if this isn't Princess Diana, just stop the test. And I walked out, and then my friend Lori Campbell, who's a medium, walked in for her testing, and she came out and she's like, did you get Princess Diana? And I'm like, I totally got Princess Diana. And it did turn out it was a friend of Princess Diana. So we were both picking up on who they wanted to hear from, but... Those are high five moments in the mediumship yeah. world of, of reinforcing that we're doing what we need to be doing. Um, I got past that because I was put through the ringer on television being tested and mm-hmm. scientists, you know, probing me. And yeah. we Something asked a question. I don't really care about to do. Right. It's in the I work. needed it, though, because I wanted to but be a lawyer. You have personality. Yeah. So, see, I'm like a little kid. I'm always right. going to be when I'm 90, I'm going to jump up and down and be excited. Uh. I, just, <laughs> I just went to an amusement park with my husband and. I do feel that babies are connected to animals, the same right. kind of vibe. Absolutely. So I'll get, when a baby's coming in, I'll be able to tell somebody, I see a baby in a pink blanket coming in. Yeah. Or this is, you know, I kind of see that. I was on I was on Zoom with my healer friends, and all of a sudden I see this little, like, sparkle behind her. And I said, are you trying to get pregnant? And she, she lit up, and she goes, yes. And she had a baby at 44. She had her first wow. baby at 44. You just scared a lot of 40-year-olds out there. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Diane Goldner is a healer, and she's my healing professor at Dead University. And she works on pregnant women with fertility, for fertility issues that are having trouble getting pregnant. She works on their husbands as well, and she can do it remotely. Anyways, she worked on herself. And she got pregnant with her only child and had him at 53. I'm like, you scare the living hell out of me. I'm like, do not stand next to me. I'm like, I don't want any of that. The the age where you start feeling safe. Not so. (laughs) So she has a a 10-year-old, and I'm just like, oh, oh, my God. So, yeah, those healers are no joke, you know. So that's great that you could see pregnancy like i said every medium has their niche of what they like to do and what they're good at and developing their style so that's that's fantastic um 
I can't wait so, for more. I just, I'm always open for more. I'm feeling like a lot of the readings I do, I don't even remember. So I feel like I've done almost- tens of thousands of readings at this point. I'm just, I just do what they need me to do. And uh-huh. I, I have to call it a day because your head gets cluttered with all the details and all of the dates of a abduction or a murder and that date. That's, I have no interest in that. None. You shouldn't. I, I, I don't mean, want to do yeah, it. I, it's, too it's dark. Heavy. Well, I was going to say that word, but you have beautiful energy. So thank you. You must be doing the right thing with all your clearing. But honestly, somebody emailed me after a reading we posted on YouTube and said, this man's been missing. And I looked at it and I knew the man's dead. And I'm like, I'm not involved in this. This no. is not what I want to do. Right. I did it for 20 years and I was watching all my girlfriends who were law enforcement retire, the DAs, the police officers. And I looked at Joe and I was like, when do I get to retire? <laughs> this is taking a toll on me too. So I decided it's not after all butterflies tw- and not at know, all. And like after we- 20 years, I just said, I'm not doing the murders anymore. I'll bring through people who were murdered for their family for some closure, but I don't work the cases. And it's been very freeing, actually, to not collect more. You know, January 2nd, every time that date rolls around, I know Mikkel Biggs was abducted on that day, you know, um, in 1999. Like, all of the dates clutter your mind and the ch- and the kids and the the people who die. And it is dark, and that's why when... Some of the younger generations think what I do is so sexy in a way. And I'm like, don't go down this path unless you're really thick skinned. Because I'll tell you, in my 30s, when Medium was out, it took a massive toll on me, on Joe. Like, I couldn't even deal with all the murders that I was working and um, book signings and tours and red carpet and. It was just too much. It was all too much. If I was going to have a nervous breakdown, it would have definitely been in my 30s because my 30s, they were rough. Um, I'm fortunate and lucky to Mm -hmm. be able to be the person mediums based on, but um, it was a lot. It it took a toll on our marriage. And so I'm glad your husband's acclimating to what you do in, he in a, he kind of gets excited like he'll some my my assistant doesn't want to work on the weekends and all my events are on the weekends and he'll have to do my uh, you know my trailer and he's like i can't do this anymore i can't shut this off he goes this is amazing because uh, it's, it's like i become it's not like i don't become myself but it's that something takes over and as you yeah. know like I try to tell people, you have to work in the light because you are so connected to the astral that it just yeah. it kind of like just it just will push you down if you're not really meditating and praying. Like I have to do that. I am really sensitive. Like I'm well, and so you're, you're all that you're all that water. It's I mean, there's water, no way you Allison. could it's, you couldn't. Water. I mean, they're the psychics of the Zodiac and Scorpio's the mediums. And, My husband's a um, Scorpio and he's like, of course you drew in our living room. And I'm like, why did I see that? And he's so you, he, he's not even trying to do this. Well, see, you're going to bring something out in him, which is great too. So you drew in the one water sign you didn't have in your chart. And I see people do that all the time. You have Pisces and Cancer, but you didn't have Scorpio. So you drew in your Scorpio. He so completes you. Knew my you. first husband was a Cancer. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what you're going to draw in. I, I drew in a Gemini because it's the only air sign I lack. I'm an Aquarius with a Libra rising. That's great. So, Gemini. so I drew. I drew in the Gemini with the Libra rising. Such a good move. <laughs> so where can people find more information on you to contact you? SusanAllenMedium.com. And I'm on Instagram. What about uh, Instagram? Yeah. At SusanAllenMedium. Instagram. And my website is SusanAllenMedium.com. I, I have some stuff on YouTube. Um. Yeah, I'll have to follow you on Instagram. I'll follow you on Instagram. I'll follow you on Instagram. 
a new a new playmate yes yes i love it thank you well susan thank you so much come back anytime i know my listeners learned a lot from you and especially with the work you do with animals are you going to write about um healing animals as well or just um communication that might be the second book i want to i want to really tell my story because i just literally walked into this i said spirit made my business i didn't like i wasn't looking for this i was well you have pisces you have pisces in your chart and pisces rules health so if you were to go into the healing field, it would make complete sense. I do healing. So I'll just... Yeah, I do healing on people and animals. Okay. So maybe the next step is you take what you learned while it's fresh on your mind, you write it down, and it's what you teach the other people that are just growing into it and coming into their own Absolutely. abilities so that you can help them walk the path with you. So, well, thank you for being here, and thank you, thank my you, listeners. Sweetheart. You're wonderful. You can... Anytime. You can catch me next Tuesday for a fresh episode of The Dead Life. To all my believers out there, don't stop believing.